There is nothing like a bright and crisp morning in the Victorian high country. And what better way to spend it than to tackle some of the great four-wheel drive roads on offer in this part of the world. We're off to conquer another iconic track in the Australian Alps. And while some of us decided to go the easy way and take the bridge, others decided to be a bit more adventurous as the river crossing looked much more interesting. The track that we're headed for and one that we've really been looking forward to is none other than the Billy Goat Bluff track. Supposedly the steepest gazetted road in Victoria as it climbs just over 1200 metres in 7 kilometres. That should be a great challenge for our Pajero, Hilux, Triton and Prado. Now the first part of the track is pretty rough and we go straight into low range as soon as we turned off the main road. And after a few kilometres we came to a helicopter landing point. And there it is, the main section of the Billy Goat Bluff Road heading straight up the ridge of the mountain. We'd been told to expect some pretty decent steps and rock ledges on this track and that we'd need to consider our driving lines very carefully to ensure we get up the steepest sections. So we were anticipating a real challenge. This first section after the helicopter landing was downhill and we all set off a little apprehensively wondering what the uphill sections would bring us. But it wasn't long before we would be heading uphill and so far it had been easier than we had expected. Now this version of the video that you're watching right now is the extended version of the story. There is a condensed version that packs it all into a three minute segment. So if you do want to watch the shorter version, have a look in the description below and you'll see a link there, or go to the end of the video and follow the links there. But this one has extra bits of footage like this part and also extended sections of onboard or dash cam footage. I've included this longer section of the video to give you a bit better idea of what the road is like up here on Billy Goat. But if you're a real fan of onboard footage, then you can watch the whole climb up the hill in another video here on YouTube. That video has the section from the helicopter landing all the way to the top. It's just over 30 minutes of video, but if you love onboard camera stuff, then check it out in the links in the description below or at the end of this video. Once we got to the uphill climb, it certainly got steep and the terrain was mixed between rocky steps and very slippery bull dust in places. This bit here is part of the extended footage by the way, and you can see that it's pretty smooth. Later it gets a lot rougher. I also said before that there's a 33 minute onboard video, and later in this story you'll hear me say that it took two hours to get to the top. That's because I didn't turn on the camera until the helicopter landing pad, which was about 20 minutes into the climb. We also encountered a bunch of other four-wheel drives along the way and they held us up for quite a long time. You'll see them coming down the mountain right at the top in the footage later in this story. And as you can see from a distance, it really is a spectacular looking track. In fact, the rest of our group are so far up the track there that it's very hard to hold the camera still when you're zoomed in so close. It wasn't long before we started to reach the hard stuff and we all had to pick our lines carefully. Now because this is the extended version, I can throw a bit of behind the scenes stuff in. I quite often get asked what cameras I use. On the outside of the car is a GoPro, pretty standard GoPro Hero 3. I also use a Sony V1 for shooting all the stuff on the outside of the car. And we also use an NEX 5T. So there you go, Sony cameras and a GoPro. The LSDs on the Triton and the Hilux were getting a good workout, whilst the traction control on the Pajero was constantly beeping, protesting the workout it was getting. And even in the Prado with its factory diff locks, they were engaged and being put to good use. But even though we were all driving pretty much standard four-wheel drives, we all made it up the treacherous sections to the top, where the road narrows across the very ridge of the mountain, with near vertical drops on either side. The shorter version of the video doesn't show as much of this section, 
but in this extended version, I'm going to let the camera keep rolling to show you that there is quite often traffic on this road, and as you'll see, when the road's so narrow, it's quite difficult to get past. We came across a number of other four-wheel drives coming down, and it really slows you up, especially if you have to reverse up and change your lines. The camera hides how steep this road really is, so when you do have to pass someone, it can get pretty risky. You're going to see us go past these other trucks now, and you can see that they're pulled right off over to the side of the road. They've had to change their line and reverse up quite a bit to let us pass, and as you can see by the drop off on either side, getting past wasn't as easy as it might have been if we'd met them further down the hill. I also talked earlier about the Pajero's traction control beeping a lot. I'm not sure if this is because it's just warning you or if it is actually overheating like the manual says or if it's something else entirely. If anyone has any real technical info on this, please leave a comment below. But let's get back to the main script, shall we? At the top of the mountain is the Pinnacles and the view from here is unobstructed and absolutely fantastic. It took just over two hours to reach the top but our four wheel drives all did a great job and now all that's left to do is head back down. <laughs>